Welcome back and Merry Christmas, everybody. The History Guy here, ready for your daily dose of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. If you did not already do so, I would encourage you to subscribe and click on the link in the description that will take you to our contest. We're going to be drawing a winner on January 1st if we hit 15,000 subscribers before that. We've got a week to go and about 1,200 subscribers to go as of this recording. So we're going to need about 150 a day, just slightly more than that. And I think we can do that. Uh, so click on that link and it'll take you there. If we get over 1,500 subscribers by midnight, December 31st, which technically is January 1st, on January 1st, I will announce a winner for that contest. Uh, you will have your pick of either Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts or Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. Both are playable versions of the game. Today, we're going to take on the Battle of Dogger Bank which was historically a victory for the United Kingdom, for the British Empire. It was one of the earliest uh, naval engagements of World War I uh, of any size, and it consisted of five battle cruisers, seven light cruisers, and 35 destroyers on the British side, three battle cruisers, one armored cruiser, four light cruisers, 18 destroyers, and for good measure, one Zeppelin on the German side. It's a major defeat for the Germans. Germans lost 1,000 men. Uh, they lost an armored cruiser sunk, a battle cruiser heavily damaged. Uh, and on the, the British side, just 15 killed, 32 wounded. So uh, what we've decided to do is just take the destroyers out of the equation, which means I will have three battle cruisers and seven light cruisers up against five battle cruisers and one heavy cruiser and four light cruisers. Uh, now, I'm going to resist the temptation to build the ship myself, which may mean I can't win. Uh, I understand what this means. Uh, I'm going to be he heavily outgunned. You can see he's got six heavier ships against my three. I've just got more light cruisers than him. So I'm going to have to be smart. I'm not sure I'm that smart, but we're going to give this a try. I want to take on the German side because they historically lost this. And I want to see if I can change history. So we're just going to hit quick start. And we're going to go right to it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to dive into the action and uh, we're starting at 20,000 meters, which is about the distance when the first shots were fired from what I've read about this battle. I confess I don't know a whole lot about it. I know that it was fought in January of 1915, uh, just a few months after the war began. I know that uh, a large key to the British victory in this battle was the fact that they had broken the German naval code something that of course they did once again in uh, the second world war when the the british once again broke that code so you can see we've got our light cruisers on either side uh, acting as screens we're going to have to be really smart with this i've just got these three battle cruisers and i've got to protect them now these battle cruisers look good we've got 11 inch guns both on the front uh, with super firing as well as on the sides and then we've also got six inch three inch and two inch but we don't have any destroyers that we're up against so uh, really, I'm not sure how much those smaller guns are going to play into things unless we find ourselves up against his light cruisers. So uh, smoke has been spotted to the north. That is the direction we're already going. So that's good news. What I want to do, a uh, couple of things. Number one is I want to get into a tight formation because we are at a distance. That tight formation allows us to get a little more accurate with the guns. All right, looks like we've got our first sighting. So he's up there. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get these cruisers to start coming up ahead of me. I don't think I will get them in a tight formation. I'm going to slow my battle cruisers down, get that own cruise speed bonus. I'll keep these ones on screen on that side. I don't know what my range is on these guns. Now it looks like about a 0.3% chance to hit at 15,000 meters. So 16.9 kilometers is the, the max range. We're actually inside of that now. You can see the green line there. And it looks like we do have one of his big ones right up front and we have fired our first shots. I think, I think I've got him outgunned. It looks like it. I mean, those might be 11 inch guns as well. Of course, the question really is about armor here.
I'm going to keep it on regular speed because I feel like I'm going to need to be as cautious as possible with this if I'm going to have any chance. I do have a few torpedoes on my light cruisers. Probably going to need those. My light cruisers go 31, which is really about the same speed that my heavy cru uh, my battle cruisers can go. I'm gonna go ahead and start turning this way, and I think for now we'll go ahead. I'm gonna try to get these light cruisers right up real close so I can use their smoke. Go ahead and go up to double speed. I want to get turned so we can get these side guns going. We could bring as many as one, two, three, four, five, six uh, sets of guns. So we've got three, four triples. So that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We could get firing all at once. Just got to be awfully cautious of the torpedoes. And here he comes. He's already trying to make a torpedo run. I'm going to go ahead and fire on him. He's got a torpedo in the water already. So I'm going to go ahead and start turning this way. I want to try and knock out these light cruisers. We got a hit, but it didn't do a whole lot. Kind of feeling like uh, like it's going to be HE with him. Oh, we got to get over to this light cruiser squadron because uh, we're turning the other way now. I mean, you can see from the fact that in a battle like this, with a, which actually I think lasted a couple of days, uh, only one ship was actually sunk on either side. Uh, just the, the inaccuracy of them, especially firing at the ranges that they were firing from. We're obviously not going to have that same problem here. We're going we're gonna to close and, and try to cause some things to happen. Eventually get these guys on the other side of these battle cruisers to screen for me. You can see we've got them all firing now. Even the secondaries. And I'm starting to get a decent chance to hit up to 7.5%. Gonna have to turn again soon. I'm a little worried about torpedoes. Which is gonna mess up my accuracy, but I got I just gotta be careful of those things. I'm just gonna kinda zigzag a little bit. I'm not gonna do a complete turn. These guys are getting in close. They have fired some torpedoes as well. Oh, we're actually getting some damage on the devastation on his lead battle cruiser. He fired his torpedoes because he's starting to turn. 
these guys dropped out, of course, because they took some hits. Oh man, he's he's bringing down a lot of a lot of damage on the Wuppertal. tall. Wow. Now we're going to go ahead and straighten out. I was just trying to change things up for the sake of the torpedoes. Where? There they are. My light cruisers. I want to get them up closer. I'm actually going to get them to follow these other guys. He's got 14 inch guns. Oh my gosh, no wonder. Torpedo. Oh, he's going at the, the cruiser with that. You need to turn, dude, big time. Oh, he's gonna get nailed. Actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Alright, we're getting some big hits on that light cruiser. We're going to take him out. These guys that are firing on the battle cruiser need to switch. To We'll put it on auto, and then hopefully they'll go to HP. Or uh, AP. Secondaries are going to finish that. Yep, there goes the first light cruiser. So we were, uh, I think we were at 10 on 10. That makes it 10 on 9. He's just got a heavier lineup than I do. If we can knock out Devastation, that would be huge. I think Tiger was actually one of Tiger and Lion were both among the British ships that were there, so that's cool. Oh yeah, we're lighting devastation up now. Even though he's got significantly bigger guns than I do, he's got 6.4 inches of armor. I have less he's got bigger guns and more armor. So mm. Maybe I should have designed my own ships. Get them into a tight formation too. All right, so far so good. I feel like uh, it's a challenge for me, but uh, Devastation's taking it pretty hard right now. He doesn't have as many guns as my ships do. And I think that's helping helping to even the odds. Hit on the Mackinson. 14 inch. And
and now they're going to drop out. So that puts the Baden in the lead. I still hate that it does this. Yeah, you know what? Be aggressive with your torpedoes there, Nuremberg. Oh, Mackinson just got nailed. And there's torpedoes coming too. And of course it's not air goes. Uh I'm trying to think of see what hit exactly the Mackinson. There wasn't any real major hits that I can see. We're down to just two battle cruisers. He's still got five. Why are we not trying to finish off devastation? Oh my gosh, there's an ammo hit. Wow. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna build our own ship because this is not gonna work. So this time we're gonna be faster, 36 knots, and I've decided to go with 13 inch double turrets. Uh, two guns, uh, two barrels to a uh, turret instead of three. Uh, we'll get more shells off in a shorter period of time. It's a 44 second reload time, plus we don't take the hit to having the triple turret technology. I'm going to see if getting more shots off makes a difference. I've also beefed up my armor a little bit, six and a half on the belt, four inch on the deck, and switched to TNT explosives. We're still at heavy shells. Let's see what that does. Okay, so this time we're heading east and the enemy spotted to the north, which uh, this is going to allow me the opportunity to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get my my light cruiser fleet a little more organized. And I don't know why Arcona waited until they got right next to these guys to actually try to make that turn in between. But we're going to get our light cruisers organized and on uh, the side that I want them to be on. See if that helps get the kind of screening that I'm after. I've slowed my battle cruisers down to 20 knots so that they can give these light cruisers a chance to get uh, where I want them to be. Okay, so we've made contact. We're starting to fire. I'm also going to go ahead and keep my battle cruisers at more of a distance. I don't know how, how that'll help or hurt in terms of accuracy. But we're gonna just see what happens. At least for now, I've only, you know, I've only got 800 shells. But we're not gonna be firing any more than eight at a time. That's at least 100 salvos. So if we start finding that we're not doing enough, then we can start moving in. But I've already got at least one hit. They're going in and kind of taking on their screening role now. They're going to go up there and start getting close. Probably drop some torpedoes. Wow. We've actually gotten some nice hits already. I got a mid-belt penetration for 251 damage. Man. I think I might have found the magic spot as far as the guns. These 12 inches seem to be much more accurate and a you know, much better rate of fire. Well, I guess they're not that accurate. I just got lucky. Now 
he's gonna run. You know, a lot of these battles didn't end with these major capital ships being sunk. A lot of them just ended with them being uh, damaged enough that they had to retire or they had to uh, be out of action for a while. And, you know, sometimes I guess that's got to be enough. I don't need to always get the sinking, even though that's kind of what this game wants from you in these missions. If I'm thinking about this from the standpoint of a uh, campaign, which, of course, is eventually the goal here, um, in the campaign, it's going to be good enough to get some major hits, keep my fleet relatively unscathed, and cause major damage to his. You know, so if I get a battleship or a battle cruiser like Invincible uh, damaged that much, that much, and he runs from the battle, and he no longer becomes kind of an active part, and my ships don't suffer that kind of damage, that's okay. There's a nice hit. So right now, let's just look at all of my bonuses. 20% own cruise speed bonus. 5% near flagship. 4% clear weather. I've got a 10% bonus because this is a Mark III gun. Long range Texan tower, my technologies. This guy dropping out too. That's the Rodney. Ooh, we caused some serious flooding on the Rodney. That's the thing. The AP definitely causes much more flooding damage where the, the HE tends to be much more on the surface, much more structural. Well, you can get the penetration, man. It's nice with the, uh, the AP shells. Oh, we got an ammo detonation. Beautiful. There's in indefatigable. Such an awesome name for a ship. I've said this before, but the British do know how to name ships. I don't even know what my like cruisers are doing, but I like it. So everything has kind of come together this time. I got my light cruisers doing what I want them to, finally. They're getting up into position. They're, they're getting their torpedoes off and disrupting things for him. Uh, I'm getting significant hits while keeping at a decent distance with my battle cruisers. So it's going much, much better. You still got a lot of, a lot of firepower out there though. And my battle cruisers are pretty far from my light cruisers at this point. I don't have them close. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up my formation to get a little bit more of a bonus on accuracy. About to lose. Well, I guess it's not as bad as it looks. He's kind of all bunched up. He's trying to avoid my torpedoes. You can see what these torpedoes are doing to him. They're causing him just kind of be all over the place with this formation. We've got two battle cruisers that are kind of isolated out here. my light cruisers fend for themselves. I'm not going to worry too much about his torpedoes. Looks like they're going to avoid them pretty good.
you still got 14 inch only four and eight four point eight inches of armor starting to close the range big time. I didn't realize we were getting that close. We're up to six kilometers away. This is where it gets dangerous, but I do have three on two over here. Penetration percent chance is 80 right now. It might be worth it to try a couple of HEs. Just see what happens. Here come the first ones. There we go. We're still getting penetration with those, so that's worth it. Invincible's almost gone. They must have taken a torpedo hit. Oh, intubatigable. Things are not going well for you, sir. Alright, let's go over here and look at Invincible for a second. There it goes. Ammo detonation. They got hooded by a, a light cruiser. That's yeah, beautiful. Right there was the eight inch, eight inch guns from a light cruiser. Yeah, that's interesting. That's giving me eight inch on those. Wow, impressive. Nice. And there goes Intifatigable. This is going really, really well right now. Zealous, you're next. They're gonna start running. This is turning into a route of the British force. It's amazing how I could do so badly and then turn it all around with just a couple of changes. That, um, honestly, besides just how I built my ships, I think just slowing my Battle cruisers way down. There goes I lost a light cruiser. And giving my light cruisers a chance to all get in one line and get on the screening side where they could actually be effective in that role made a huge difference for me. First of all, it, it eliminated his light cruisers from the equation as far as keeping them away from my battle cruisers. So it gave me a chance to kind of go toe to toe with three or four of his battle cruisers. And I got a couple of key hits early on, and that really made a difference. And my light cruisers are definitely overpowering his. Zealous is about to be gone. And these 12 inch guns have been really nicely accurate. All oh, 13s, I have 13s, but I only have two. Uh, turrets, or yeah, two guns on each turret instead of three. All right, we lost another light cruiser. Not a huge deal. I'm kind of allowing that light cruiser battle to go on on its own. I think we're at least gonna put them in AI mode so they can kind of do their own thing. Just need one more good hit on the Zealous, I think. There's an ammo detonation. What was that on? That was on a light cruiser. So we've got his heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, and courageous left after Zealous is knocked out. Major victory. Major victory. Having a little bit of trouble hitting him right now.
There we go. Beautiful. Oh, don't think you're going to get away. Alright, I think we can go ahead and speed things along a little bit now. Just got to start zeroing in on this target. I'm going to go ahead and start turning toward him a little bit. See if we can close this distance. Oh, we got a light cruiser that's coming in to try and score a torpedo hit. It appears we're aware. My 8 inch guns are doing pretty good dealing with him. Those 8 inches are definitely much more accurate than they used to be, even for this only being 1915 technology. Courageous is almost out. He's getting away just as quickly as he can. Let me get the Württemberg to start firing on this armored cruiser. Torpedo hit, nice. Who did we hit? Oh, we hit a light cruiser. The Indus. The Curlew. I think his light cruisers are out. It leaves these two. Go ahead and speed things up a little bit more. It's just a kind of a chase down mission now at this point. There goes Courageous. Now everybody focuses on the last one remaining. Man, would stink to be this guy. Knowing the entire German fleet's trying to finish you off. Beautiful, beautiful, that's it. All right, so there you have it. Do not forget, subscribe, enter that contest. We'll hopefully be picking a winner in just about a week. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year, God bless.